So record on this computer. All right, guys. So welcome to the 10th and final topic for uh, Shell Life Wire, Sarawak Shell Life Wire webinar 2020. Our final topic today will be pitching, right? Uh, just uh, a quick question. Maybe you can respond in the chat group. Anyone has pitched before, has uh, joined either a competitive pitch or pitching uh, to uh, an investor or potential investors? You can. Um... All right. So we got AJ Butler. Sorry, I'm just looking at the chat group because it kept, kept popping. All right. Uh, maybe you can share uh, your experience on the chat group. All right. Pitching. So uh, the outline of today's uh, webinar will be four topics. Number one is why do we pitch? We look at the art of the pitch and the science behind pitching and why you choose to pitch your business idea, right? Uh, and then choosing your business idea to pitch, I'm sorry. Uh, number two, we're gonna look at once you are clear uh, with the business that you're gonna pitch, you're gonna develop a blueprint. You're gonna single out who your audience are what are their expectations and what is the most powerful way to move them or to drive them towards supporting your business idea. Uh, third, you're going to build your pitch prototype. Uh, I think this is a very interesting lesson because we're going to look at uh, these 10 powerful slides, including your cover uh, that, that, that you will be building uh, as a submission for not for LiveWire, but not just as a submission, but also as, uh, as, 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 as the main connection or interaction between uh, yourself and the judges and assessors for them to decide whether to, uh, to, to, to vote for your idea, right? And number four, we look at some tips on how, do we, how can we increase the impact of our pitch. So we're going to look at style and tone and, and what not to do as well, all right? So this is the outline for us today. Uh, so number one, we're going to look at the art of the pitch. Right. So in pitching, uh, I think a very good uh, way of looking at a pitch is to look at it as a storytelling exercise. Right. So basically, people uh, for I mean, people like to understand things to information and all that. But in order to lead and move people, you have to start with beauty. Right. So uh, beauty comes in the way you storytell uh, your pitch and the flow and, and the art of your pitch. So stories can move, mobilize, and motivate people towards change and action. So the idea of a pitch, just like the word pitch, if you know, uh, I mean, if you're familiar with baseball, right? When people throw the ball and there's a catcher that, that catches the pitch. So the idea is not just for you to present, but for you to uh, get the other person to catch what is it that you're pitching, right? So today we're going to look at three areas. Uh, first is how do we develop the blueprint of your pitch? We're going to look at how do you build your pitch or storytelling prototypes? And lastly, how do we enhance your pitch for greater impact? So uh, storytelling, uh, I mean, I want to open with storytelling because the idea behind storytelling is when you tell stories, uh, you actually move people. There's scientific research that shows that uh, we remember stories. We don't remember uh, facts and data, but we remember Cinderella, we remember beauty, we remember stories that people told us that move us, that made us laugh, that made us cry. Uh, we remember movies, right? Because it, it, movies are also form a story. Uh, number two, stories increases empathy because it helps you connect at a human level with both yourself and the audience that are listening to your pitch. As I mentioned uh, earlier about moving us, stories help us remember. So a difference between yourself and other uh, businesses that are pitching the same idea. So if your, if your stories is, is more moving, more compelling, then it is more likely for the audience, uh, the investors or the judges to remember your story. And that's very important because at the end of the day, uh, people, I mean, I have a lot of experience being judges, judge, being a judge in pitch competition. We would normally go on which one is your top three. So often it will spark us on the ones that we remember, right? Uh, and and uh, fourth, stories help us to encourage cooperation because when people believe and are compelled to your story, it is more likely for them to support and, and want to be involved in whatever it is that you're pitching. So 
here's some science behind storytelling and why it is important. Why as you uh, work on your final uh, pitch deck, right, for, for Share Life Wire, you should look at how will this, will my pitch deck move people? Can they see the big picture, right? Uh, uh, what, what do I want from them? And will they give me what uh, I want from them? Or, or am I giving them what they want, right? As an investment or as an impact investor. So we're going to look at one video. Uh, this video is quite popular. It's by Simon Sinek, and it shows that how human actually starts with why, right? Once you are clear with the why, then everything else sort of follows suit, suit right? So let's have a look at this video. <laughs> I call it the golden circle. Why, how, what? This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it, whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP, but very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose, what's your cause, what's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Meh. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done. That's how most sales is done. And that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do. We say how we're different or how we're better. And we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You ready to buy a computer from me? All I did was reverse the order of the information. What it proves to us is that people don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This explains why every single person in this room is perfectly comfortable buying a computer from Apple. But we're also perfectly comfortable buying an MP3 player from Apple, or a phone from Apple, or a DVR from Apple. But as I said before, Apple's just a computer company. There's nothing that distinguishes them structurally from any of their competitors. Their competitors are all equally qualified to make all of these products. In fact, they tried. A few years ago, Gateway came out with flat screen TVs. They're eminently qualified to make flat screen TVs. They've been making flat screen monitors for years. Nobody bought one. And Dell. Dell came out with MP3 players and PDAs. And they make great quality products, and they can make perfectly well-designed products, and nobody bought one. In fact, talking about it now, we can't even imagine buying an MP3 player from Dell. Why would you buy an MP3 player from a computer company? But we do it every day. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. When we communicate from the outside in, yes, people can understand vast amounts of complicated information like features and benefits and facts and figures. It just doesn't drive behavior.
When we communicate from the inside out, we're talking directly to the part of the brain that controls behavior, and then we allow people to rationalize it with the tangible things we say and do. This is where gut decisions come from. You know, sometimes you can give somebody all the facts and your figures and they say, I know what all the facts and details say, but it just doesn't feel right. Why would we use that verb? It doesn't feel right. Because the part of the brain that controls decision making doesn't control language. And the best we can muster up is, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Or sometimes you say you're leading with your heart or you're leading with your soul. Well, I hate to break it to you. Those aren't other body parts controlling your behavior. It's all happening here in your limbic brain, the part of the brain that controls decision making and not language. But if you don't know why you do what you do and people respond to why you do what you do, then how will anybody how will you ever get people to, 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 to vote for you or buy something from you, or more importantly, be loyal? Um, that's quite interesting, right? Uh, I think the idea that I want to share in sharing Simon Sinek's video is, as you consider pitching your business idea, look at creating a big why to motivate people. It's the same as uh, maybe I, if I can answer Zi Kiang's uh, uh, question just now about people are apathetic or not putting their weight and all that. Maybe the question can also be they're not inspired, right? So uh, in your pitch, right, when you say your big why, uh, I see a lot of entrepreneurs actually rather than saying that we're going to make a lot of money, we're going to make profits, right? So you can say things that is relevant, for example, uh, you're going to uh, save the environment by using sustainable uh, materials or you're going to help people from the bottom of the pyramid or B40 or the vulnerable. So by, by, by framing the why, the big why that, that your business exists, I think it's easier to people to buy into what is it, it is that you're selling, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be so serious. I know some of you are in the lifestyle business and all that. So what is that big why when it comes to if you're selling coffee or if you're selling um, uh, a clothes, right? So maybe if you can articulate the why for people to, that which people can see and actually, uh, I mean, that, that big picture, that big idea, then only after then you can pitch on how you did it and what it is eventually, right? In terms of who are doing it, in terms of your capabilities, in terms of uh, the financial projections and all that. But... Uh, things to consider is to, to look at the big why and ask yourself whether it is compelling, right? Is it, is it something that will make people feel, will move people, right? All right. So uh, for, for, for this first lesson, we're going to look at, at, uh, at making it very clear what it is that you are pitching. So I give an example here that I need to tell a story or I need to pitch about something so that I can drive something or get some action from the people that I'm presenting to, right? Uh, so a pitch can be to get investment, can get people to support, can get people to join you as a partner or as a, as a team member. So uh, it, it should be very clear what is it that you're pitching and what is it that you want from the audience. So an example here, I actually use an example of one of the Shell Life Warrior winners uh, where I need to tell a story about my solution for sustainable fishing so that I can inspire impact investors to support my company. Uh, in this instance as well, he could also say that so that I can inspire government agencies to come on board and support my initiative. So ask yourself what it is that you're pitching, what is it that you want from the people that you're pitching to, all right? Okay, let's look at the chat group if there are any questions, or if you have any questions regarding your your big why when it comes to your product. Uh, since most of you are here, uh, I'm just gonna remind that in the pitch deck template and also the pitch notes today, uh, the final deadline for everything uh, for the Shell of Wire this year will be at 6 p.m. on Friday at, uh, uh, on 30th of October, right? Submit uh, your, your exercises and, and the pitch deck to Amanina Darwisha at Satyakreative. All right, so let's move on to lesson two, which is developing your blueprint. Before we even start pitching, it's very important to uh, understand and appreciate what it is, it is that you're pitching, right? So there are some questions that you should be asking. 
And this is the, what we're going to cover in this chapter. So it's important to get to the point and stick to the point so that your audience is clear about what it is you're asking from them. In my experience, many uh, uh, presenters that maybe did not have so many experience pitching, right? They tend to go off tangent. They tend to uh, spend a lot of time on the less important things, which does not do them the service when they actually have something quite exciting, quite interesting to share with the audience. So the objective of this chapter is to help you focus, right? What it is that is my strong point, what it is that people will get excited about my product. And when, when you're clear with that, when you're building your pitch deck, you can go back and ask yourself, am I sticking to my point? Am I doing justice to what it is that I want to share initially, right? So uh, before we start doing a pitch, I would recommend that you create a simple brief for yourself. Uh, this brief has components and questions, and the questions are, who are your audience? In this case, for Shell Life, you are pitching uh, for Shell to support your business as part of their social investment project, right? So do some research. What is it that is important about uh, to Shell, right? Or, or to the stakeholders like, like the South government or, or other people that may be involved in the judging process, including myself, right? So who's your audience? What does your audience care about? And what is it that you're trying to achieve, right? You can't just give the audience what they want to hear. They also want to see something authentic, something genuine from yourself. And they have to be, they, they have to, 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 to be very clear what is it that you're trying to achieve, right? As I mentioned earlier, some of the thing may be related to environment. Some of the thing may be related to uh, maybe uh, uh, sort of promoting unity, or maybe some of them are helping the poor, or some uh, perhaps there are so maybe say uh, um, sustainable fishing or, or sustainable way of farming. So uh, these three components actually help you to be very clear and defined in terms of what it is that you're pitching, right? It's not just about dollar and cents. It's not just about a business that can make money, right? It depends on the pitching uh, format or competition. So I guess if you, uh, if you did some research on LifeWire, a lot of it uh, has a social impact to it. So how does your business relate to creating social or environmental impact, right? So it doesn't mean that if your business does not have that, then you do not have a chance. I think it's all about angle. Maybe at the same time, you can look at how do you can you add those components in your business. And I think that's quite meaningful as well. All right, after you've answered those three questions, the next question, which I devoted an entire slide for it, is what is your big idea? How big is your big idea, right? Uh, so if you watch movies, right, like The Matrix, for example, uh, I do not know if you're familiar with The Matrix, but The Matrix, the big idea is we actually are not in control of our life. So it's very clear and it tells a story how uh, such big idea is, is, is communicated or expressed. So if you look at other movies, uh, 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 maybe um, The Avengers, right? The Avengers shows that uh, sometimes when the world is under attack, one single superhero is not enough. You may need a group of superheroes with different capabilities in order to help us save the world. So that's the big idea behind, uh, behind Avengers, right? So if you look at Batman, just to um, emphasize on this point, maybe Batman is about a person who lost his family when they were younger and sworn not to make it happen to other people. So they decided to, uh, to, to become a vigilante, right? So that's, uh, ask yourself, what is the big idea behind your business and behind your uh, product or services? So three questions that you can use to keep your big idea in check are, does your big idea capture the problem that you're trying to solve? So here, the problem or opportunity can be the why right? And your product is the value proposition that you offer in order to address those problems or, or gain those opportunity. Is it compelling? People should be inspired uh, to action after hearing it. 
I really love what they're doing and I'm going to support it with my wallet, right? And thirdly, is it clear and concise? Ask yourself, how, do I, how can I make this pitch simpler and clearer, right? What can I do? Maybe I choose a certain word to do it or maybe I'm going to use image or I'm going to add some video to, or, 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 to support my, my pitch, right? So these three questions will keep your big idea in check and help the audience understand what it is your big idea is, right? Uh, so this is not an activity that you have to submit, but it can be a brief to guide you as you submit your final pitch template. So for today's exercise, the submission is only for the pitch deck that we've created. The pitch deck is quite blank, I have to admit, but we wanted you to be uh, able to express your creativity. So use it as a guide. You can add colors, you can change the fonts, you can add uh, uh, graphics and, 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 and uh, use your talent in design to make your pitch deck look uh, presentable, right? So for this activity, you can write down your business name. Uh, maybe your business name is Elevate. Maybe your business name, name is uh, um, Eda Baran, right? Uh, then you, you can answer the three questions for the brief. What is the big, uh, your big idea? and the medium that you think best serve your story and why, right? Um, I think the, the last question is optional, uh, but if you want to just trigger your brains and, and, and consider uh, would an image help, would a prototype help, would a chart or infographic help, then uh, this is what the box is for, right? So what does your audience care about? What are you trying to achieve? What is your big idea? And, and uh, the medium which you think best serve your, uh, your story and why. Another way to look at an idea is ask yourself, in a nutshell, what is it that I want to share? In a nutshell, in, 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 in a simple word, a term as possible. All right, let's pause for a bit. Any question, guys? About pitching or about the submission or about your idea? Uh, I'm open to accept uh, questions. Okay. Um, what does medium refers to? Uh, medium refers to uh, the format in which you, uh, you, 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 you present your pitch. So in, in this exercise, the format is a slide presentation, right? So everybody will probably look at what would make a slide presentation best in order for me to, to pitch this. Another medium is for this uh, exercise, you actually have an option to submit a video recording on top of your pitch deck. So if you're doing video, what would uh, make the video better? Or how, uh, how should I produce this? What kind of a production quality? So in this exercise, the, the, the main medium is the uh, slide presentation, but you also have the medium of a video recording because of the digital format of our program this year. I hope that answers your question, Tay. Any other question uh, uh, related to the big idea or, or the, uh, the brief? These are actually very useful tools. Even when I was working with uh, multinational global brands, we always create a brief. Uh, uh, okay, uh, let me answer Dennis' question. The pitching submission is on the pitch deck PDF, but you have an option to support them with your video format, right? in case that you need, you think that it will help clarify your idea better. So we encourage people to do the video format, but we didn't make it compulsory just in case some of you have limitations in terms of recording and all that. So we, we didn't want to force that on everyone, right? The idea behind Shell Hawaii as well is we want to be inclusive. That's why we have recording in case some places uh, do not have the best internet connection. All right. Okay, let's move on. But if you have any question, uh, feel free to post it on, on the chat group. Eh? So now let's look at our lesson three, but at the second step of building your pitch deck, which I think many of you are probably anticipating when it comes to today's class, right? What is it do I put in my pitch? 
Okay, so we were gonna look at it from a prototype standpoint. Before you design something, it's, it gets good to make it rough and scrappy, right? Why? Uh, just like design thinking, our first topic for Shell Life Wire, right? We want to fail faster to succeed sooner. If you are like so precious in making everything perfect, by the time you want to make changes and all that, uh, you might not be left with a lot of time. So at first, do it very low-fi, low fidelity, uh, very scrappy. But once you get a better feel and more confidence in terms of what works, then you start to enter the graphics, the design, and, and, and all that. <clears throat> so uh, when you're building prototype, you can start just with a, like on paper, on a, your journal, or on, on just on, a, uh, on anywhere you can write, eh? Some, even a napkin even. Just write a rough draft, right? What would be on slide one, slide two, slide three, uh, and, and so on. Uh, try talking about your, uh, about, uh, about your idea to a friend. Uh, it's, sometimes it's good to get it out of your head and, and, and share it with people so that you can hear yourself. You learn both from the feedback that you may receive from them and also from hearing yourself speak. Uh, you can use post-it notes, uh, sticky notes. We really love that. Sticky notes allow you to arrange your ideas and rearrange them because they're so easy to, to unstick and stick back, right? Uh, you can also use a storyboard. Storyboard basically uh, looks like a bunch of uh, rectangles and then you can draw in and, and, and amend and edit uh, in those boxes so that they are neat and organized. So uh, the three uh, prototyping, just as we've looked at with design thinking, just start doing, start building, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, right? As mentioned, failing early to succeed sooner. Then share with people, and after you get some feedback, reflect and iterate, make changes and improve your, your pitch deck. Uh, so ways to get feedback, this is just a bit of recap from what we did from the first lesson, because that lesson was maybe uh, six weeks ago. Um, Questions that you can ask people when you are like uh, doing your practice pitch with them. What, what was memorable? Uh, do you have anything that you don't understand? Any questions? Uh, what do you think works? What moved you or motivate you? Uh, do you have any, in your opinion, what was the big idea? Did they get it or not, right? This will allow you to, to amend and tailor and adjust your pitch before you make your final submission. We have ample time, we have about five days, uh, so you can, uh, you know, just find like one day, you know, a couple of hours just to uh, get feedback from others, right? Another way of doing it is, uh, this is the benefit of YouTube. You can record yourself and share with people that you are comfortable with, and you can get feedback digitally from them as well. You can also share your pitch deck and get feedback uh, via WhatsApp or email, right? Uh, and then once you've uh, received your feedback, then return to your blueprint, uh, uh, rewrite things, you know, use papers and all that. Uh, sometimes it's good to sleep over it and revisit it next morning and, and edit your draft. All right, so this is the meat and, 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 and the main point uh, that you, well, I want you to take away from today's lesson. So these are the 10 slides that you need in a pitch. It's not a hard and fast rule, uh, but it is a good guide, right? So you start with a title. Your title needs to be very clear. Uh, who, I mean, you put in your name, your contact details, uh, uh, and so that we know uh, who is pitching here, right? Uh, next, you want to present the problem and opportunity. You can look at what you've done with market research and, and use it as insight and finding for you to establish that the problem and opportunity is compelling, sizable, and, and, and something that can make a, a sustainable business. Uh, number three, uh, your value proposition and the offer that you, you bring. What is your product and services? This is where you reveal them. And how does it help address those problem and opportunity? The underlying magic is a continuation from value proposition where you show how it works, right? Uh, maybe it can be in the form of, of, of uh, a special ingredient or uh, uh, something different within your process that makes your value proposition uh, happens, right? Uh, business model is quite straightforward. Uh, for this um, exercise, I just want you to put in your final business model that you have done for exercise uh, exercise four, I think, right? when you were looking at environmental scanning. So after you considered your business model, you considered your customer 
uh, segment and also their value proposition that they require to address those, uh, those job pains and gains that they have. And we look at the environment, what would be the best business model? So for the pitch deck, uh, this is where uh, your pitch deck, uh, your business model comes in as the final submission. In terms of go-to-market, the question here is, how are you going to start promoting your business? You can consider waves in terms of, uh, uh, will you start with social media? Will you uh, uh, have events that will activate your programs? So look at it as a timeline thing on how do you establish yourself in the market? When you're looking at social media, maybe you can consider how many people you're reaching, how many percentage you are converting into customers. So that goes to go to market. Competitive analysis, look at the market research as well. But here you look at how are you different from existing competitors, right? So you can do a two by two matrix, or you can do a table which highlights what you have and what your competitors don't have. And, and in, in the WhatsApp group that we have, I will share with you uh, some example of pitch deck that you can use as reference. Uh, I always use the reference of Uber and Airbnb. Uh, uh, they actually have uh, 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 their earlier pitch deck, which is uh, published online. So we'll just share those PDF with you. And then um, eight, who are your team members? Because it's not enough for you just to have those ideas. You need to build a team around that idea. If you haven't got anyone, you can put a position there, right? Just so that we can see that you have a big picture because uh, alone, it's very hard to scale business. We want to see how you can become a owner manager rather than an owner operator, right? And uh, ninth is the financial projection. For this exercise, we'd love to see a one year to three year projection uh, that you have done uh, with the exercise that we've shared in week seven, I think, right? So you uh, get them, summarize them, uh, show us what's your targeted revenue uh, per quarter or per month or per year, and then look at what are your operating costs, uh, uh, what, what are your cost of goods sold, I'm sorry, and what's your operating cost and what's your expected uh, operating profit or loss, right? And then uh, we can look at key metrics and achievements that you already had, some traction that you already have that can also uh, add value to your pitch. So this, uh, I'm just going to run through the, the, the 10 slides. So first, you come up with your title, uh, put your company name, your own name, your title, uh, maybe your email address if necessary, right? But I think the three key things are the company name, name, and title, and also maybe your email address should be suffice or even cell number. Right? You don't have to put your house address or your company address, I think. Uh, next is the problem and opportunity. Describe the customer pain that you're elevating and the pleasure that you're providing. It can be at a very micro level, but it can also be at a macro level right? when you look at the entire uh, industry or market. Right? Support your findings with your market research. You have conducted this, and this is where you, you, you sort of combine things together. Next, uh, your offer and value proposition. Introduce your product and how your value proposition addresses the problem and opportunity. And the product can be your company as well, if it's in service, for example, right? And then the underlying magic, this is an expansion on how it works. Can be a flow chart, can be a certain element of your business. Uh, for example, uh, the underlying magic is it's affordable, it's uh, uh, cloud-based, so those can be in word form as well. Right. Uh, and then your business model. This one is quite straightforward. Just insert your business model canvas. Uh, next, your go-to-market plan. How do you plan to launch this? How are you going to market this? Right. You can use social media. We've looked at social media yesterday. Right. So it can be part of your go-to-market strategy. But I would suggest not to depend solely on social media. Are there other modes and methods? Are you going to use influencers? Are you going to do promotion? Right. Things like that. And then the competitor analysis. This is just to illustrate to the people who are judging your pitch deck that you are aware of the market, you're aware of the threats and risks of competitors. Right? Uh, your management team, who is in your team? Uh, if you do not have 
your complete team member, uh, you can just illustrate that, that, that there's a position that you will fill up uh, once you start, right? And then financial projection and metrics. This is where your uh, managing cash flow and cash uh, webinar would help you uh, come up with a projection. Uh, we, we expect between three years here, but it can be one year, it can be two years. But ideally, three years is not a bad uh, way of showing when you become profitable, for example. Maybe the first year, because you're investing a lot, tax and all that, uh, then uh, if you just show a one-year projection, it would be not as, 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 as promising, but maybe after second year or three years, you start going into the black and you can show your growth trajectory. So we're flexible with this. It can be five years as well. The longer the projection, the less accurate it is normally. Okay. And then uh, these are just some traction that you already have. If you've won any other competition or you've received any investments or you have captured uh, a key customers, if you're in B2B, then this is where you highlight them on the last slide. All right. So uh, the activity here in, 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 in process or in progress of your final pitch deck is to build your first cut meaning your first cut doesn't have to be well-designed and all that. Just answer those 10 slides and that is your uh, uh, sort of prototype for the pitch deck, right? So any questions so far on prototyping? Is there any, any, any one of the 10 slides that you need, uh, you're not clear with or different from that, what you've done in the past? I hope to see some of you actually uh, go through the process of, of actually recording yourself on YouTube. Uh, we actually uh, have an option that you submit a three minute video recording of you pitching and going through your pitch deck. Uh, the duration is three minutes, uh, Nadia, but it's optional. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you do not have the resources or technology that can help you to create those, uh, the pitch deck, it's okay. You can just submit your PDF, right? We understand. Uh, Dennis is asking, pitching submission is in video format? No, uh, the pitch submission is on PDF, the 10, 10 pitch deck, but you can complement them with a video presentation. The video presentation can just be a, a Zoom where you can record. I think that's the easiest one, but try to limit it to three minutes and then upload this uh, uh, to YouTube. Nisha is asking, will it helps you to win Mr. Azwa? Uh, it will help us maybe uh, get a clearer picture of your pitch, but I think to be fair, uh, it is just to support. So we'll judge everyone fairly based on the pitch deck. So we'll remind the other judges as well, not to be swayed by, 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 by the, the presentation so much, right? Uh, okay, Dennis is asking, uh, I think you don't have to reveal any, uh, everything, but uh, the pitch deck will be confidential. So you, if it helps you to convince uh, the judge that you have some support, then it's okay. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to caution as well, if you have an NDA with your partner, uh, maybe it's not best to share uh, anything if, if, if that is part of the NDA. Of course, of course you can. Anything within three minutes is fine. We're open to your creativity, Nadia. So Nadia is asking, can you send like a professionally edited uh, with uh, like 12 cameras here? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you can upload it uh, on your personal account or can you upload it on uh, 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 any account that you are in, in control with? Just give us the link and make sure that the link is uh, usable. All right, Bohanuddin, good question. <laughs> So getting more questions, uh, but like I said, it is optional. Um, when you win Shell Life Wire, um, you actually uh, have the chance to join this 
uh, other competition called the Top 10 Innovators, where you're competing globally. And for that, you actually have to submit a, a 90 second video. Uh, so I think uh, uh, three minutes is under an 80 uh, seconds, so it's a double the time, right? So I think it's ample time for you to present your idea. All right, excellent. So now let's move on to the, eh, wait, I got another question, is it? Okay, Zi Kiang Te, after we submit, is the final presentation for the selected and is the video presentation or physical presentation? Uh, it, it is a video, I mean, there's no presentation this year because uh, I think when we discuss about the framework of the program, we had to change it uh, in, uh, dramatically uh, because we don't want to re put anyone at risk. Right? Your health and safety are everyone uh, at LifeWire is concerned. So this year, it is just uh, a submission of the pitch deck and, and we will review from there. I had the video as optional just in case uh, most of you or all of uh, want to have that chance to actually pitch. So I think uh, pitching can be quite exciting as well. So that's why we, we put it as an option that you submit your video presentation as well. All right. I hope three minutes is enough. I think it is. Okay. So now let's look at uh, the last chapter, which is designing for impact. So in designing for impact, there's two parts. We're going to look at the video presentation at the same time, we're going to look at the, uh, the uh, pitch deck that you're creating. So uh, again, uh, at the end of the day, uh, try to look at the audience as human beings, right? They are people, they have the desires and all that. They have their need for, for, for entertainment, for excitement. So when you're designing your pitch deck, when you're, when you're recording yourself, try to think of how would people respond to what it is that you're presenting. So setting the tone is very important. Uh, you don't want to be a professor that lulls students to sleep, right? So you want to, at least for that three minutes, even if you are like a very quiet introvert person, but it doesn't mean you can't play a role, right? When you are pitching. So control your tone, make it a bit more louder, have some a variation in your tone of voice. You can use pauses for dramatic effect. So here are some checklists of do's and don'ts uh, because it is your business idea and you want people to get excited. So it's important that you seem and appear excited about your idea. So when you're pitching on a video, then we want to see that. Uh, speak naturally. Don't suddenly have a weird Swedish accent <laughs> if you don't have a Swedish accent naturally. Uh, speak thoughtfully. Choose your word, right? Uh, uh, I noticed in my experience working with a lot of uh, presentation, um, with a lot of uh, 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 pitching as well, uh, you, you try again and again and see which word actually suits the, what you're trying to say the best, right? And, 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 and lastly, just like the first point, speak passionately, right? Have you ever had this problem? Or currently the world is going through a pandemic pandemic not just have an effect on the health of, of um, millions or, of people around the world, it also has severe economic uh, repercussions, right? So you can do something like that. And the don'ts here are, don't speak like a robot. Um, or sometimes nowadays they have the YouTube where they actually type something and the robot reads for them. So I think that, that's not advisable. Uh, don't believe that smarter equals to more formal. Uh, some people, they use bombastic words like jargons, right? Uh, it, it's not necessary. I think if the point is clear, you will appear smart, right? Sometimes if you obfuscate uh, your words and all that, make it, um, I mean, incomprehensible, then it may be doing your presentation a disservice, right? Don't speak in dry businessy language, right? Just, uh, just like the do's that we suggested, speak from the heart, right? and try not to be boring. How do you know that you're not boring? Then that is where prototyping comes in and testing your presentation with your family and friends and ask them, can I make this more exciting? Or was I boring, right? Next. So these are common six tips that we use a lot in helping people increase the impact of their presentation. Number one is 
uh, when you're telling story, you can make it personal, right? We've seen in the past where people present something where they had the problem themselves or a family member of a friend of theirs had the problem. So that builds empathy and makes connection, right? Uh, you can get emotional, right? Um, I think, uh, you know, show your emotion uh, uh, as much as you can. Uh, actually, that will also help people to, uh, to, to see that, that you are genuine and authentic. And that always is a plus point, right? Uh, you can use anecdotes and reflection. Uh, uh, anecdotes means that imagine that you are, you help people put themselves in the room. Have you ever, like, uh, have you ever uh, been in, in a place and there's no phone signal and you are like, uh, you were a bit scared, right? And it's like getting dark. So by using anecdotes and, and, and like that, right? People can actually put themselves in the situation of the people that you are trying to solve or create that opportunity from your business idea. Uh, number four, uh, words, uh, people, I mean, people read less nowadays. So if they are, there's a chance where you can actually show rather than tell, use, use visuals, right? And, and fourthly, uh, no, fifth, include a call to action, right? Uh, at the end of your presentation, if you're recording yourself or at the end of your, your, your pitch deck, right? Make a call to action. What is it that you want from them? Help us save the world. Uh, your support will really make a difference for these people. Uh, go out and vote, right? So include a call to action. And lastly, point number six is stay inspired. Uh, sometimes when you're stuck, uh, switch on some music, walk outside, uh, go and exercise, right? Go, I mean, uh, you, I mean, not every place is, you mean it's not encouraged to go out now because of the, the pandemic, but it can just walk around your house or, or, or pause for a while and do something else, right? So uh, go online as well, look for inspiration, look for other pictures and, and you can learn a lot from others, right? So stay inspired. So here are some example. Uh, I think this is, um, example of long words uh, over a picture, right? Sometimes, I mean, for, for this purpose, we don't recommend this blank, uh, uh, blank slide with just images because it doesn't say much unless it is your product and it actually illustrates your product. Uh, but otherwise, don't write like in paragraph form so in when you're building your pitch deck. One common rule is always to uh, look at this 30, 20, 10 rule, right? I think, but the 30 part is where try to use about 30 points fonts in your presentation, right? Uh, 20 minutes presentation and 10, min 10, 10 slides. So here uh, on average, you can look at uh, two minutes per slide, but uh, it depends on the, the framework of the pitch. So in this case, uh, we, not, we don't have the luxury of two minutes per slide because you're gonna present uh, 10 slides in, 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 in three minutes, right? So try to calculate and allocate the amount of time you're going to spend on each slide. And maybe some slide may be longer, some slide can be quite succinct or brief. So consider that, right? All right, so here's an example. Uh, one is less, one is more. Uh, but maybe what we want to strike a balance here because uh, the judges will do not have the chance to ask you questions, unlike a normal pitch, maybe it is a balance between these two, right? Some information, but not um, long and, and right? So here's another example. You can just illustrate rather than um, showing all the charts and all that, you can simplify them and make it more digestible for people reading your slides. The key here is to get people to get it, right? And, and don't force people to see through tons and tons of data, right? Because it is a, uh, it is, it is, it is a pitch, a pitch deck, right? So normally once people uh, uh, get your pitch and you go for the second meeting, then you can submit a more comprehensive proposal. But otherwise a pitch deck should be simple, but clear enough to get the message and big idea across. So uh, after you've done your brief, uh, you've done your uh, first prototype. So, uh, so now the final part that you need to do is to refine and look at the tips that we have shared and, and look at 
how it can uh, increase and enhance the impact of your presentation. So now we go on to the final submission, the final project for Shell Lafoyer 2020. I'm quite excited because this is the first year we have it fully online. Uh, some people prefer physical class, but I think we make the best of what we have. Uh, as they say, uh, when life gives you lemons, we make lemonades, right? So for the final project, uh, it's time to bring everything that we've learned together in this course. And the intention here is to share. It can be something that you can keep for yourself. It can be something that beyond LifeWire, you can actually go out and use your pitch deck to pitch for other opportunities uh, like grants or, or, or investments, right? And, and you can use this as a starting point if you haven't got a pitch deck yet, as a point where uh, it can be the basis of the pitch deck that you will have for many years to come, right? Or many months to come. So we can't wait to hear, watch, see, and read your pitch. So the final project here is using everything that you have learned from the Sarawak Shell Lab 2020 webinar series, build a pitch deck for your business idea. So here where we have a maximum of 10 pages. Uh, if you think some of the 10 suggested pages are not relevant, you can change them but we think some are compulsory, like the problem statement is, is a must. I think uh, the value proposition is a must. The business model is a must. And also the financial projection and team is a must. The rest, if you think that you need more pages to express uh, certain things, you can, you can mix and match that, right? So as an option, uh, we encourage you to record a three minute video of you pitching your idea and upload it on YouTube so the final submission format is email uh, Amanina, uh, who's been very helpful. I, I would like to take this opportunity to thank her as well for organizing and making sure that uh, we have a, quite a full class every week for the 10 sessions that we've had uh, to submit your PDF file and, uh, of your pitch deck and also the YouTube link that we can uh, download as well. Once, once you give us the YouTube link, we'll download your video and then we'll share it with the judges for them to review, right? Uh, so the deadline will be at 6 p.m. Uh, we are quite firm with this. Uh, actually, initially we thought of having the deadline on Wednesday, but we got some feedback from some of you. I thank you for that feedback. And we discuss it with, with, um, with, with the stakeholders and they agreed to extend it to Friday, 6 p.m., 30th October, 2020, all right? So with that, uh, I thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll spend some more time, but I just want to take this opportunity to, to, to thank you and wish you all the best. And I hope to see some of you and most of you uh, in, in future programs with Shell. All right. So with that, uh, let's take up some question, guys. Can we use TikTok for video? Uh, I am not that familiar with TikTok, frankly. I, I haven't got to that platform. Uh, but if you can record three minute video on TikTok, by all means, uh, if the link is clickable, go ahead. Um, uh, we it would encourage uh, YouTube, Zi uh, Kiang Te. Why? Because otherwise, there is a risk that we might get uh, like gigabytes of files. So YouTube allows us to compress it and only download the right file size. Um, so I hope uh, that request makes sense, Zee Kiang Te, because uh, you know, right? Uh, can we use Bahasa to pitch? Go ahead. Uh, uh, you can put subtitles uh, if you are not comfortable. Same with Chinese as well. If you are like pitching in Chinese, you can put subtitles there. I think as long as we can understand, it's okay, right? Uh, even with Shell Lahawai, if I can share, we have this program for our alumni where uh, they organize a global pitching uh, practice. You can actually pitch in English, in Arabic, in Mandarin, and in Russian. <laughs> so they don't have the Bahasa option, unfortunately. <laughs> but if you can pitch in Russian, power to you. All right. Uh, any more questions, guys? Let's, let's spend some time uh, to really answer the question because I think anything uh, beyond this class, we'll be responding on WhatsApp. So we can take this opportunity uh, to, to, to sort of like raise some questions. And it's quite useful for your other friends as well. Right? Maybe they haven't thought of that question.
right? Uh, for the video, uh, yes, I think for the video, it depends on what you're comfortable with, but I would recommend if you put in subtitles in English, right? So because all this while our main uh, medium of presentation has been in English, uh, I would also encourage if you think your English is not strong, it's okay. We've had winners in the past who are, uh, I think the language, I mean, I think uh, they, they think they don't have the confidence to pitch in English, but actually it's, it's not as bad as they think. In fact, it, they're quite good, right? Because the key thing is we're not judging you based on your English. We're judging you. We're looking at uh, your business idea, your business model, whether you're capable to deliver uh, the idea, right? Okay. Uh, would it be okay not to display your face? It's okay. You can use uh, visuals. You can use the slides and just move the slides. Uh, any, anyhow, that it will help make your business proposition clearer. All right, Nadia? So some of you are shy with your uh, camera and all that. It, it's okay. Because mm, the main thing will be your pitch deck. The video will be optional and, and supporting it. But we would highly encourage because uh, we should be comfortable with all this digital medium now because it seems like that's how the world is going to look like, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, okay, good question from Seth. Uh, I think here, uh, you want to show your projection. Uh, I think when it comes to investment amount, uh, maybe you don't have to be specific about it or you can be specific about it as per you, your needs, but don't, don't pin it down to what Shell will be giving and all that, right? So uh, you, if, if you think that you need 100,000, you can just put it in your pitch deck S, 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 how you project what you need for your business, right? Uh, we learn a lot when we're learning uh, managing cash and cash flow. We learn about our burn rate, right? So the key thing in doing your financial projection is your burn rate until to a point where you generate enough revenue uh, that you can break even and go beyond that, which is profitable and sustainability. All right? So... Uh, this pitch is quite unique because um, um, I think for many businesses, uh, the capital requirement is a lot bigger than, 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 uh, than what the program may be offering, right? But the key thing here is to make, comp make it compelling. When you, uh, when you, Present your problem statement, for example. You can take clippings from newspapers. You can screenshot them. Uh, you can get some graphs and data. Uh, you can show a picture of image of people losing jobs, for example. And nowadays, a lot of people are, are concerned about employment, right? So uh, I think one of the key things is to make sure that your idea is relevant, right? Um, I had uh, instances where uh, people pitch and they confidently say that, have you ever had a problem uh, putting on makeup in the morning? But most of the panelists were men. So sometimes be careful in very scripted pitches as well. Make sure that the problem is something that uh, people can uh, empathize with, right? And connect with. So the idea, uh, the key takeaway today is when it comes to pitching, people must be able to catch what it is that you're pitching, all right? Okay, I, from the sound of it, many of you are excited about doing the YouTube video. I, I look forward to them. Um, like I said, uh, probably will not get it the first time around. You probably need to do several recordings. Uh, you need to practice and, and make sure you don't talk so, so fast as well. Uh, talk naturally, right? Not too slow, not too fast. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I will share some examples of uh, pitch decks on our WhatsApp group uh, as your reference. A popular one is the Airbnb one. All right, any uh, question guys before we wrap it up for our webinar this year? Oh, before that, I know some of you have left, but can we take a, a final selfie for the year? Always a selfie, eh? <laughs> All 
All right. Okay, it has been a pleasure, guys. And um, just be cautious. Huh? I think uh, now around the world, not around the world, around the country, COVID cases are actually increasing. So limit yourself going out in, in public spaces. All right. So I'm going to wait for a bit because some people need some time to adjust their hair. Huh? <laughs> Okay. 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 Right. Okay. I'm going to take the photo soon, guys. Anyone want to switch on the camera? <laughs> All right, say cheese, guys. Where am I in the photo? Oh, there am I. <laughs> All right, fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. <clears throat> You're all on mute, so I'm clapping alone. All right, uh, let us. Thank you so much. Um, so, as usual, we have the. Um, uh, post webinar survey. I'll put the link on on our WhatsApp group as well. Uh, okay, there's nine things here. All right. Uh, thank you so much, guys. It has been a pleasure. On behalf of Shell as well, thank you uh, for participating. And um, I look forward to you guys. see all your success in business, right? As entrepreneur as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you.